Narcissists are love thieves. Our victims have many things in common. Those shared traits are why they are chosen and why they become subjected to our repeated manipulations. The evidence of considerable and extensive empathic traits is of course one of the prerequisites to you coming under the scrutiny, either conscious or unconscious, of the narcissist. Where you exhibit a tendency to care, an ability to see another person's point of view, an ability to want to heal things, fix things, reconcile matters. Where you operate with a sense of justice, where you demonstrate a strong moral compass. These and other behaviours which appertain to the relevant empathic traits, you are in effect issuing a neon lit come and get me to our kind. The fact that you score very highly on the empathic scale is of course of considerable value to us. This means that you will cater to the prime aims better than any other classification of person, better than the narcissist, better than narcissistic people, better than normals. It also means that as a consequence of being an empath, you are easier to ensnare and easier to keep ensnared. There is another empathic trait, however, which is fundamental in proving irresistibly attractive to us. And this is your devotion to love. The fact that you are a love devotee. Some empaths have huge love devotee traits. Some smaller, but it's there nevertheless. You believe in love. You are advocates of the act of loving. You give love, and although not always, you want to be loved in return. Love is all you need. Love conquers all. And love is a many splendid thing from the empathic point of view. Love matters. You see that the world can and will be a better place if more love is exhibited. You love with a depth that is beyond many people. You truly give your all. Your love is perfect, selfless, and based upon emotional empathy. It is on the foundation of a deep-seated notion that loving someone is the best and most wonderful thing that one person can do for another. These are such noble and laudable sentiments. Your status as a love devotee means that you will strive to maintain that love once it has been gained from another. Love may give the appearance of having departed, but you know, you believe, you always believe that it can be found and resurrected. Often, this love devotee trait becomes corrupted by your emotional thinking that causes you to believe that love will return. Of course, where you're dealing with us, it never existed in the first place, but you have been conned into thinking that it did, and you're conned into thinking that it will return. That which has become dulled and blunted, you believe can be polished and returned to sharpness. That beautiful golden glow will shine again, and you are the decent and good person that will make it happen. You are, of course, the healer and the fixer. That which is broken shall be mended by the application of your burgeoning heart. You are a disciple of love, and as such there is nothing you can do but act in accordance with the principles of loving. It is second nature to you. We instinctively recognize this and exploit it. You are so full of love that you must find ways of allowing it to manifest in the world. And of course, the pinnacle of doing so is to find that special someone. You want to find the one so that all this marvellous love can find a true home. You are compelled to find that person misled into believing they are a soulmate. Because we, of course, use that term ourselves to corrupt and to ensnare. You are looking for that life partner, that best friend. Only then can your obligation to provide this amazing love be fulfilled. And... It is fortunate that you are this way. On a daily basis, 
it is good fortune for us that you, delicious and beautiful empathic individuals, are committed to the promotion, promulgation and practice of love. We come with the appearance of being that one special person whom you can lay all of your love upon, that person who will readily accept all of the love that you have to offer and that we will apparently return it. Some of you would happily give this love in order to ensure that there is an elated recipient, and amazingly, it doesn't even matter to you whether that love was returned or not. Your sacrificial, sacrificial nature is stunning, yet even more welcome. We, of course, by our mirroring, are content to reflect your love in order to bring about yet more of it from you. We recognise the transaction, and we oblige, because we are actually giving you absolutely nothing. We have come to take. We have descended on you, ready to strip you of every ounce of love that you can provide. We will slurp it from you, nibble it from your straining frame, and gulp it down as we devour your love. We will take it away from you, time and time again. Do not be mistaken, and think that you are providing this love based on a reality. You are doing so on a false premise. You have been conned into giving this love to us because we make you think that we are the very thing you want, when in reality we are anything but. We are fraudsters and thieves, and we have come to take your love. If you knew what we truly were, you wouldn't offer your perfect love to us, but we must have it. We want it so much, because it gives us control over you, and it provides us with the sustenance by way of fuel. We make you unknown martyrs to the provision of love. We come without warning, even though we appear with an explosion, all of it aimed to distract and misdirect you, so that we may pilfer your love. Ah, thieving, knows no limits or bounds, as we take that which does not belong to us, and we utilise it, commandeer it, sequestrate it for our own warped purposes. We keep on stealing your love, until you are left spent and wretched, sat amidst the ruins of the relationship which once seemed impregnable and infinite, and now is little more than ash streaked across blurred stone. We gorge on your love, gluttons that feed at the banqueting table, as you slowly realise that the sumptuous love we appear to return to you is in fact empty, a puff of air, and without any substance whatsoever. It is the image of love, not the substance of it, because we have no emotional empathy. We have no love. We are incapable of it, and instead we must steal your love to use for ourselves. Unfortunately for you, this realisation comes far too late, for by then the damage is done. Not only have we helped ourselves to all of your love, we have invariably ripped away and stolen your capacity for further love. Once you finally extricate yourself from our grip, and eventually make sense of what has happened to you, even though it may take some considerable time, how often have many of your kind uttered the sentence, I do not think I will ever love again. How can I, after what has happened? Words similar to such a question are regularly uttered by those who have been sucked into our malevolent maelstrom. We are the love thieves. We come and take the love to which we are not entitled, but we have no care for that. Oh no, we rip out your heart in order to leave you bereft, so that you may well lack the capacity to love again, or at least think that. We steal your love. We have none to give. We are devoid of it, empty of it. Many of our kind believe that we love, but we do not. We cannot, for we have no emotional empathy. And instead, we are the love thieves of your past, the love thieves of your present, and even, in some instances, we become the love thieves of your future love. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.